Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Balkan. Today I have for you game three in a best of three between Herr Robert and Dinesta in Herr Robert's Grand Tournament. This is the quarterfinals and today we are going to be seeing Omaha. On the Allied side Herr Robert's going to be using the 15th Infantry Scots and on the Axis side we're going to see the 91st Luftlander. So it's 1-1 in the series so far. In game one, Dinesta defeated Herr Robert's 21st Panzer with his first Panzerna. And then in game two, we saw Herr Robert use the second Panzer to defeat Dinesta's Guards Armoured. So now we're going to see something again very different. Uh, 15th Infantry is, of course, an infantry division um, with some pretty nice heavy tanks in the early game. Of course, you do get the AVREs, you get the Churchill 5s, which are decent at longer ranges. Moving into phase B, then you have the Churchill 7s and something that he could definitely make good use of against the 91st Luftlander. The 91st Luftlander is an infantry division itself. It relies on the Ersatztruppen and Stier 42s and it looks like a Stier 42 is going to come down early on. It also has the elite troops like Volksjägers as well as very good air force uh, to work with. So that's something that we may see Dinesta try and rely upon, especially to take out things like an AVRE, for example, in Phase A. I'm pretty sure the 91st Luftlander would have to use a HS-129B3 if it wants to take out that AVRE early on. Otherwise, the rest of the units probably aren't really up to scratch. You could probably bring in maybe a Pack 40 and get it close range uh, to try and find a shot. But other than that, these uh, Panzer 35Rs, for example, won't really do the job. Let's have a look at the actual composition of Dinesta's forces as he has seemed to have placed them down relatively quickly. Uh, we do have some recon on this bottom side. He does have access to uh, Fulsham Spear Troop and Fulsham Panzer Abwehr, I believe. So um, this could be either um, the Ersatztruppen, I believe that would be the Pack 40, uh, the Panzer 35. Further up is going to be two units of flamethrowers. These will be, I think, Fulsham flamethrowers. Um, Further up from that is going to be Ersatztruppen. Then you have some more recon there with the Stier 42. And the Ersatz flamethrower combination is actually pretty strong. So it'll be interesting to see Dinesta use that. Then on the top side, it's just going to be a Panzer 35R to hold the line with some spear troops so far. Over on the side of Herr Robert, he is going to be bringing in a AVRE to the bottom side. That's going to be accompanied by two units of rifles and the command infantry there. Now that AVRE, it could be stopped by the Pack 40, honestly, uh, but it really depends if the Pack 40 gets spotted soon enough because otherwise, uh, Herr Robert can maybe play around it and get some fire position shots using these like houses to block line of sight directly from the Pack 40, and then fire positioning next to the Pack 40 with the big spigot mortar, and that will definitely pin it down very easily. On the top side, there is going to be a bunch of rifles here with command infantry, and there's also some recon on that top side. So probably just going to be spreading those out to hold the front line forwards whilst having a more considered push on the bottom side for Herr Robert. It looks like Dinesta's strategy is going to be pushing into the center, maybe trying to get through this area, uh, get some troops in here, and then control this open ground. And possibly he could use the Stur 42 to push into this town area, which would give him, again, more territory. But Omaha is a very, very nice map. Um, I like how it sort of is more confined than some of the other maps. It definitely introduces a lot of infantry strategies that are very fun to watch. So um, that's what I'm looking forward to in this game. There's been quite a long deployment again. It seems like both players are just very considered in their approach. Uh, when it comes to deployment by the way we are now off and there we go the spread of units for the nesta there going to be a fast move and then the attack move for the Stier 42 i would presume and then we have the unloaded position commands looks like one's trying to get quite far into the field there but uh, an alster is on the way for Herr Robert. Not often you see one used with the 15th Infantry Scots, but we'll give them him the information he needs to see this Pack 40 as he flies over it, if he flies over it, because he actually hasn't. He's moving more towards the center. We'll spot that this is a Stug, or Stug, sorry, not a Stug, and um, that basically means that he doesn't have to worry about too much 
armor in the mid. Seeing the pack Panzer 35 on the top side, but I don't think he saw the pack 40 on the bottom, which is actually a pretty big deal. Ocean Panzer Abwehr also a pretty large threat to an AVRE. If this manages to stay hidden and then the AVRE gets into range, the Ocean Panzer Abwehr can find the one-shot kill. So that's something that Dinesta might be counting on here with that Ocean Panzer Abwehr. On the top side, it was a Ocean Spear Troop instead of Ocean Panzer Abwehr. So definitely had access to both. But meanwhile, we can see the Ersatz Troop and trying to make some ground here. The Stur 42 did have line of sight onto the rifles. Pack 40 reveals itself by firing at the infantry before they unloaded. That's interesting. So now the AVRE here, it can try and make some ground. It's going to have to just fast move as close as it can, but the closer he gets, the more chances it's going to penetrate. Because that will go up to 17 AP. So this is pretty dangerous. Also, of course, the Fulcian Panzer Abwehr is here. And crew knockout from the Fulcian Panzer Abwehr. That's just going to jump out the building quickly, but then it'll jump back in once it's reloaded. It'll fire away once again. Wow, ammo storage hit there on the AVRE, and the Pack 40 does the job. Big mistake there by Herr Robert early on to lose that AVRE so damn easily without it doing a single point of damage. Meanwhile, in the mid, Stur 42 used much better alongside the Ersatz Truppen and the Spear Troop to find some ground there. So Dinesta has found himself the plus one. Alster uh, now just flying around to see what's coming in as reinforcements. Fortunately, Herobert can play relatively defensive on the bottom side since there is no armor to assist the infantry to make ground down here. But this mid area is pretty unfortunate for Herobert. It's going to be very hard to push back into, especially if the Stur 42 can get into a point where it can cover this road because then any infantry that comes up to contest will just be hammered early on. And it's unlikely that a honey really is going to be able to kill a Stur 42 reliably. And that's going to be the only sort of AP tanks that Herr Robert has available in phase A. He's now supplementing for a Churchill 5 on the bottom side. Uh, probably going to be looking to use that to kill the Pack 40 now, but that Pack 40 has already done the job it needed to. And well, look at this. Absolute train of infantry charging towards this town. Forshmeg is going to unload early so they can use their MGs to pin down this infantry whilst the Urzats try and get up close and personal. We also have a Panzer 35 coming up to help out. We can see the rifles that were brought in to stop the salient were surrendered. But Dines is just trying to get as far as he can now with these Urzats. Unfortunately it seems as though some of his trucks are getting a bit stuck there but by the way, all the Urzats now unloaded. And they are actually opening up, well at least one of the squads is, with its MP40. But I feel like a lot of these Urzats are just straight up dead. I reckon he could probably have tried to get them, or at least the last squad, much closer and into a building. Which would have made a hell of a lot of difference. Because it would have meant that the Urzats died a lot slower. And with that being the case would have then had time to use the Panzer 35 as fire support and so on much more. So that would have been very nice. Either way, um, rifles showing themselves once again to Erzatz and the Stur 42 getting involved. This combination is just so good with the 91st. Just double Erzatz, Stur 42. It works so well against uh, divisions that don't have high AP in Phase A. So Fulschenfuhrer Ehrlich is a pretty big target here, needs to stay alive. Doesn't have any smoke to cover himself, so that's something that Dinesta needs to be worried about. Especially with the Churchill 5 now getting involved, that's going to definitely hurt these Erzats a lot. But some of the Erzats getting nice and close. This Panzer 35 though definitely needs to start fast moving forwards and using its machine gun because its main gun is pretty damn useless at uh, killing infantry. Stur 42, now going to be engaging the scouts here. Actually, it might even end up trying to kill the universal carrier, but there is a honey on the way, and at that range, the Stur 42 might be under a bit of threat, but uh, two Panzer 35s are going to be coming up to a company, plus an AT gun. I like the addition of this AT gun, honestly. Churchill 5 has found a shot onto the Pack 40, has pinned that down. Pack 40 manages to hide itself as a full bat, which is nice. Here comes the Panzer 35, now getting its machine gun on range. 
And that's what we want to see. Pin down the rifles, get the job done that way. Do you see that the Erzats did die? Not entirely sure what to. But uh, either way, job done. And uh, yeah, there we go, rifles pinned down. They're not going to surrender because there is a rifle leader there, but uh, either way. An engagement that's going to continue for now. Both the Panzer 35s and the Pack 36 we're going to fire at the honey there. So that covers the Stur 42. Allows these Erzatz Truppen to continue to be a nuisance. But as we can see on this top side, the Panzer 35 actually died. And, well, that opened a huge salient up here, which uh, has allowed a plus one for Herr Robert. I, th I think it was quite simply that one tank that was sitting up there holding that front line forwards, and now it's dead. Well, it's opened up the front line. H29B3 did come in and just take out the uh, Churchill 5. Sorry for missing that. Uh, but either way, infantry is going to continue into this town with those rifles being dealt with. And this is quite scary, actually for Herobert as we move towards phase C because if it gets to a point where Dinista can reinforce into this town with his own infantry then it's going to be very hard to dislodge himself but the thing that Herobert can definitely do is take advantage of this ground on the top side and that's something I'd like to see him continue to do so that he doesn't have to worry so much about this town on the bottom side if he does happen to lose it which at the moment it looks like he is going to I don't like how Dennis is leading with the Forschenfjeller though. I think that's a, a very bad idea. I know there is another one behind, but I still think it's important to keep these command units alive where possible and not unnecessarily use them to engage infantry like this. Because at close range, those rifles are going to absolutely melt uh, the Forschenfjeller there and likely kill them off. The Universal Carrier killed off the uh, Ersatz in the open because it is two-star veterancy and those Spren guns can actually be quite lethal. By the way, infantry engagements continue. Potion Flammenwerfer is getting closer, and this could actually make a big difference here in the town. If it just comes in, pins down the rifles, or at least forces them out of the buildings, then these rifles are left very prone to the engagement from the Potion Jägers and so on. Potion Jägers are doing a great job, as that strip did go down though. Now the Foschimiga is going to be finishing them off and engaging these rifles at an ideal range. Also get the Panzerfaust onto that Universal Carrier. We now see a more Ersatz Truppen arriving. And again, that's another rifle squad pinned down. The rifle leader here is now going to come under pressure as the Foschimiga has moved forwards. And there's just a lot of ground being made here for Dinesto into quite a defensible position. So on the top, it's just going to be Erzatz and the Panzer 35 coming in to save the day. However, these six pounders can certainly be very effective against the Panzer 35 if they need to be. Erzatz might be a little bit more difficult for Herr Robert to clean up on that top side, but he does have a universal carrier, and as long as that's covered by the six pounders, he shouldn't have a problem uh, trying to uh, pin down a lot of that infantry. But has taken full control of the town down here. That's now going to be joined by two mortars, I would assume and that will definitely help defend that in the future as we move into phase B. But Dinesta has found himself enough ground uh, to get a plus one once again, but these Erzats both being pinned down are going to both be surrendered. Not the end of the world since the Erzats are only worth 10 points, but still, uh, not something that uh, you really want to do and could have been avoided. And honestly, I would have preferred to have seen the Erzats just kind of move downwards and just again sort of close off a little bit of the salient that Herr Robert has there. So 50mm mortars were in those Kubals. Now see the honey coming around the corner. Is that going to be engaged by the Panzer 35 as well? I think it is. But there is a 6 pounder here and that's going to make all the difference. That has a potential to kill this Panzer 35 quite easily. And the other for that matter. Still 42 has currently moved back and is heading to the top side. That is looking for shots, I believe, onto the six-pounder. I think that's probably the only reason that he's bringing that up there and doesn't have any more to sort of reinforce in phase B. Otherwise, you could just sort of wait one tick and bring in another Stur 42 because they're only 110 points and you're getting 120 points per minute. Now, between these two divisions, the income is actually pretty damn similar. So they put out roughly the same amount of threat in each phase. 
just in different ways. Like I mentioned with the AVRE, it was up to the Pack 40 to take care of that. HS129B3 also was used in Phase A to take care of a Churchill 5. Both of those powerful units were used, and in the same way, Herobert did use the AVRE early on and his Churchill 5s. So now Stier 42 getting involved is going to be engaging some of this infantry. Allowing the Erzatz Troopen to possibly push forwards and find some surrenders here because there isn't actually a rifle leader for this very top section of units. And that could make a lot of difference actually in this engagement moving forwards. Another Stier 42 is on the way in phase B. So now the Panzer 35 that's going to be engaging the rifles here. Uh, an AA piece has finally been brought in by the Nesta to stop the uh, recon from providing too much information. But these Fortune Spear Throop, look at them go. Doing a decent amount of damage to the rifles here. Rifles do have one more HE though. So that's coming into play as the MP40s of the Spear Throop are not being used. But the pack was just killed by the off map from the Churchill OP. It's going to force back the Panzer 35 as well, allow this honey to get very aggressive. Six pounder might also end up finding a shot onto the Panzer 35 as it retreats. Six pounder has revealed itself on the top side to the Panzer 35. If Danessa is keeping an eye on that, then he will have a target for his Stuart 42. If he just attack moves that up and to the right slightly, then it will be able to get a shot off. He doesn't have to be careful about the range because he outranges the six pounder naturally anyway. Well, here comes HS129B3, takes out the Churchill. Pack 40 is going to be looking for the shot onto the Churchill 5. It looks like it took a shot back down to one health now. But great job by the HS129 there to clean up that reinforcing Churchill. Now the Stur 42 here going to be fire positioning into that 6-pounder. The Stur 42 on the top side is... Just going to be attack moving and helping out with the rifles. And there you go, 6 pounder dead. And we see MU109G6R6 on the field as well to help out cover the HS129B3. But incoming off map is going to clean up the pack 40. No one health AT gun for Donesta this time round. And also the Fortune Flammenwerfer go down, which is a nice extra kill to go with it. So with one of those six pounders now dead, uh, there's not too much to cover the infantry on the very top side, but Her Robert did notice his lack of command and has brought up the dingo to compensate. This six pounder could still be a problem though, especially as the Panzer 35 and Stier 42 continue to advance. But as long as the Panzer 35 is ahead of the Stier 42, um, then it's likely the six pounder will fire at that first and that will be good for Dinesta as it will reveal the location of the six pounder, allowing him to counter it appropriately. Um, this 6-pounder, I believe, has shot onto the Panzer 35 here. Um, it's going to be very hard to sort of hide that. He can maybe tuck a little bit closer to the tree line, but looks like that's just going to try and retreat on its own, and it's only a matter of time until that gets killed now. Unless it hides itself, which it looks like it may have done just about. Panzer 35 getting very aggressive. The 6-pounder doesn't really have the right line of sight here. If it had 1,200 meter range, then it probably could have engaged as the tanks went past up up to the right here. But in this case, not going to be the case. Um, Forshmiegas could be a quite nice target actually for the six pounder, but not really having enough time to get on target there. This six pounder is remaining hidden, and that could actually mean that it finds a decent kill at some point. Polshimigas are now making some ground back up here, and it's continuing to be a plus one now for Dinesta. So things are getting pretty unwieldy. This Panzer 35 is in a very odd position. <laughs> did not notice that sooner. And the other Panzer 35 here did manage to fall all the way back. So now some recon coming in. They won't really be in range to spot the six pounder. This six pounder is surely going to kill this Stur 42. There you go. This is more like it. This is the kills that Hell Robert wanted. Ammo storage hit. And it's dead. Not only are they very accurate, they reload very quickly when they are high veterancy. And that's definitely helped out there. Now, Dennis are going to try and screen that with a bunch of infantry. Six pounders on its way. Upwards. 
And if that can find another shot onto the Stuart 42 or Panzer 35 here, then that would be a very nice for Herr Robert. It would stop that push in its tracks. So very much relying on that now. I believe this would be another Flak 36 on the way to cover the top side against any airstrikes. Also allows him to engage enemy aircraft uh, with his own having that advantage of AA on his side. Although, saying that, Herr Robert has now invested in a couple of Bofors himself to stop the HS129s probably from being too much of a threat. Looks like here the Panzer 35 just about pinned the rifles in time for the Ersatz not to die. Stuart 42 and Panzer 35 pushing very aggressively have found themselves some assault pioneers and rifles there. Here comes the ME109 G6R6, will likely find the kill. Yes, he will. Recon aircraft goes down. That's finally dealt with for Dinesta. So the 6-pounder hasn't moved up enough just yet to find shots onto the Panzer or the Stuart 42. And with the incoming infantry here, it's going to be hard for Herr Robert to find that shot in the near future. But meanwhile... It's not uh, Erzatz, two Erzatz with Stur 42, it's three Fallschirmjägers with a Stur 42 this time around. That's going to be incredibly difficult to deal with. I believe Herr Robert there put an attack marker onto these mortars after they revealed themselves firing at these rifles which are trying to advance onto the town. Churchill 6 comes round the corner here, does find the kill onto that lonely panzer. There is now another Churchill 4 on the top side as well. So we've got both Churchill 6s and Churchill 5s. That confused me for a second. Or Churchill 4s even. Uh, but yeah, the Churchill 4 at close range can definitely deal with a Stur 42. So nice choice of unit there. Not so happy with the Churchill 6 choice. I think Churchill 7s are just so much better with the 15 front armour. Either way. Plenty of infantry now coming in for the push onto the bottom side. Herr Robert's going to have to hope though that these can actually get close because these will be assault pioneers and they only have five strength squads so it's going to be pretty difficult to actually make ground down there unless the units he's going up against are already pinned but meanwhile here we are watching the Ersatz Trooper absolutely go ham onto the rifle leader or Shemig also trying to get involved now the six pounder going to come under fire from the machine gun this Volshmig is in an ideal range here to do absolutely tons of damage and if the six pounder goes down, that will be a breath of fresh air for Donesto. You won't have to worry about that anymore. And can be a much more liberal with his tank movement on this top side as they have kind of just been left to be tucked up there. Assault Pioneers did manage to get into the town. This is pretty important, but they do get instantly surrendered as the second truck coming in gets killed by an AT weapon. These Volshimegas though, look at that. They're completely out of ammunition. That's what allowed them to get so close. But those assault pioneers, yeah, they, they managed to get there, but they just couldn't stick around for long enough to get the grenades off. If they had, then that may have been a different story, but instead, it's not going to be happening for now. Black 36 also helping with the defense on this bottom side. 50mm mortars, one of them's still alive, the other one's been taken out. SFH-396 is now on the field. It's a heavy artillery piece. Seems to be a little bit fo too far forwards for my liking. Um, but will definitely help deal with the Bofors, with the 3-inch mortar, for example, and any future AT guns that are come across by the Nesta. 3-inch mortar on the top side, though, does take out the pack up there. Command carrier that's coming in with a 3-star veteran C, trying to kill off as much infantry as it can. Definitely can be quite lethal, but the Panzer 35 trying to stop that in its tracks. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, the push continues. It's going to always be extremely difficult to make ground into the town here, because since we moved through Phase B and are now in Phase C even, the Nesta does have these Pioneers, which match up much better to Assault Pioneers. So, I think no matter what Herr Robert tries to do, unless he like off-maps this and then just drives through it, he's not going to be able to make too much ground. And I believe this Church Joy OP will have used up all of its off-map. The 2-inch carrier might be able to help pin some units here and there. But uh, Donesta has his own off-map on the way. 
to help protect himself against any future attacks. So track wheel damage there for the command carrier. If the pioneers move forward slightly, they would be able to surrender that. Uh, command for the side of the nest that does go down, but uh, as that's trooping also coming under fire from the Churchill Six. You can see a lot of these Volkswagen actually are, are suffering, especially this one that in this engagement is getting the rifles here. I did find that the Volkswagen got quite far up, but. I'm not sure too much is really happening here in terms of like Herr Robert making ground. He, he seems to just be stuck and this Churchill 6, potential here for this to be killed. Unless the HS129 just completely whiffs all its shots. The unfortunate there for Dinesta to not find at least one hit regardless of whether it killed or not. Either way. Volshimig is now engaging at an ideal range just behind this tree line. This is actually a really nice location for a Volshimig. Probably would have been better to be in the house even, but now the mortar's coming in to try and swing that in favour of Herr Robert. But uh, Dines is certainly being difficult to, be, to push into, and here comes the off map on the bottom side. Has done an absolute ton of damage here to the push that Herr Robert was trying to make. Sherman 2 is now on the way. These Sherman 2s are very cost efficient. With the mod 2 down the road, it could be quite difficult actually to to push. One thing I'd like to see is this mod actually move all the way further back so that it doesn't have to worry so much about the 1000 meter range. Yeah, you can see these German 2s with their 5 HE and their machine guns. They pin down infantry very quickly. Panzer 35 is trying to engage Sherman 2 here, but probably not going to be too successful in doing so. Further up, Bolshemir Gizen. Pioneers just suicide charging now, and this Volshimjäger has found itself pinned very quickly and killed off even quicker by the command carrier. I just find these command carriers are, are absolutely lethal when they have such high veterancy. They just it seems to do loads of damage. Either way, um, new Volshimjäger is coming in for the top side with the Panzer 35. Dines is still sitting on a plus one in the 16 minutes left on the clock. Two inch carrier is going to be hit by the off map now. And these are probably going to be more pioneers, making it even more difficult for Herr Robert to push into the town. It is good that Herr Robert's putting pressure on multiple fronts, though. Because if he does keep up the pressure, he will eventually break through here. Especially through things like these pioneers and ersatz, the, the Volschemjägers there. They will all die if rifles sort of accompany the Churchill 6 in moving forward, just like he did with his own Stur 42 and the two ersatz. In this case, though, the Churchill 4 going to be finding the uh, the second shot onto the Stur 42, ends up getting surrendered by those rifles, and that removes a lot of the tank support on the top side. And, and finally, Herr Robert has sort of stabilised up here and will be able to continue to push through. It's really now going to be up to Dinesta to react to what has just happened and hopefully defend the top side for him. Um, whereas Herr Robert, he's hoping that he can make as much ground as possible as quickly as possible because 1200 points is not anything you really want to mess with at this point in the game like 15 minutes if Dinesta makes it difficult then things could get pretty harsh or well, the fortune flamme there there I don't know why they tried to fall back they could have just smoked themselves off I feel like that was a little bit of a mistake from Dinesta but either way does still hold the ground on the bottom side and pushing into this town was always going to be difficult so I am a bit concerned about why Herr Robert has put so much emphasis on doing so has now brought in his own larger off map and that might be able to do the job unless it gets killed by the other off map that uh, the Nesta brought in that would be quite spectacular actually if that actually happened but no not this time around Going to be able to get that off map strike right onto the centre of this town, I would assume, and um, then try and push into it with these assault pioneers he's held back. So, Fortune Makers on the top side, they're going to be finding and uh, killing off those rifles. You can see the SFH here that's going to be trying to use its RT to pin down some of these rifles. It does have 14 AP though, so if any tanks do try and advance it, it does kind of act like a decent AT gun. Not sure what the range is on that. It'd be 1,000. Okay. So the Volshimig is 
They're now being pinned by both of us as well. Uh, Danessa shouldn't be trying to move forwards here. Unless he saw the off-map coming, in which case spreading out is a good idea. But I don't feel like it's a, it's a good idea to try and move out of this town, especially when Herobert does have it covered by so much fire support. Surprised that Herobert isn't being more aggressive up here, though, especially considering he is still seeding a plus one. Uh, Churchill 5 going to be engaging the Urzats. It looks like it didn't matter how spread out those units were. Off-map hitting very hard indeed. Is Marder 2 able to get a shot onto the Sherman? Not quite. It fires and kills a unit of rifles. Another Marder 2 coming in for the main road. More pioneers on their way. And the nest is going to have plenty of them. But this needs to get a move on, in my opinion. Taking out the Panzer is very nice there. Continue these rifles charging forwards. Find yourself some ground, Herr Robert. And this is a very strong setup for a push as well. It's not like he, he doesn't have all the fire support he needs. Uh, like the rifles will move forwards even without recon and, and spot all of the infantry for him. Um, the 3 inch mortar can then suppress that infantry. And then the Churchill can sort of move forwards, both of the Churchills here, and pin down those units and, and assist making actual ground. So the fact that Herr Robert isn't really trying to take advantage of that up there for now is kind of baffling. Is very much focused on the bottom side of the map at the moment. Definitely trying to make some ground uh, back into this town. Oh, nice kill from the off map there. Does kill the Marder 2. Potential for it to kill the second as well if it gets a direct hit. Doesn't look like it will. Did do some damage to the Flight 36 in the process, but that landed just before the infantry. Uh, so, infantry now going to be able to deploy itself back into the town. Sherman 2 might have something to say about that. But as long as they can get into buildings, they should be fine. This command definitely needs to unload, because that's probably the main thing that needs to survive at this point. Oh, ho, ho, the Panzer 35 getting an internal fragment there onto the Sherman 2 is nasty. Not something you want to see for Herr Robert. Now we see the uh, SFH-396 coming in with its artillery shells. Just trying, trying to pin these rifles as they advance towards the town. But even if they do manage to get into the town against these uh, pioneers, they should suffer quite badly. We do now see uh, off-map coming in again though. And that is hitting the mark quite nicely actually. It's probably going to be a barrage. Um, so... If the Nestor like, sees this early on, he can start to actually move forwards. Yes, he will go into the fire of a Sherman too, but at the end of the day, he won't be hit by the off-map. So, probably a better trade there. Back to 50-50. 11 minutes left on the clock. The Nestor's reaching the, uh, well, 1,387 points right now. All of the rifles that we're trying to push have been pinned. Marder 2 now trying to engage the Sherman 2. 2 inch carriers trying to help out against the Polshemagers. But that barrage still doing plenty of damage. We'll have quite a few more shots left as well. As it continues to hammer the backside of that town. But th these pioneers definitely have the opportunity to move away from that at this moment in time. But rifles, one of them does get killed. And honestly, it might get to a point where Herr Robert has a serious lack of infantry availability. These rifles do find a kill onto an AT gun in the mid here. Bedford Supply, though, does get captured by the Urzats, and that's not something you want to see. Stoke 3 is now on the way to assist in the mid. And since Herr Robert isn't really relying on anything too heavy in, in say, um, a Churchill 7, um, a Stoke 3 can actually do a serious amount of damage um, in this game at this moment in time. So, love the choice of unit there. And considering it's two star, potentially three star, gives it even more lethality, which is very nice. The rifle's now trying to, to move forwards, but aren't really being supported by the, the Churchills very well. This Churchill 6 is gonna be heading down towards the mid. This Churchill 4 is just like nowhere to be seen when it came to the infantry engagements there. The Fortune were quite simply allowed to carve up those rifles and that's not ideal. JU-88 coming in there for a bombing strike. HS-129 going to be going for the kill onto the Sherman. Does find it. 
was going to look for a shot onto the bottom side of the map as well, I think, but the Bofors holding it at bay. So yeah, on this top side, the pack's even dead now as well. I think the mortar took care of that, so there is definitely room for Herobert to push back up here. Just hasn't. And could have done it easily five minutes ago. Oh, nasty kill there. Is that the six founder came out of nowhere? Just one shot the Stug 3. What was such a good unit ends up in flames and, well, there goes another one. Now that's just leaving the infantry to defend in the mid here, but as we've seen already, the Nesta certainly knows how to make it difficult for Herr Robert's infantry to push forwards. So... Yeah, Herobert just needs to kind of get a move on. <laughs> that's that's the main thing here. He has found himself the plus one, but you can see that it's not going to be enough uh, to win the game. Um, so he's going to have to find a plus two now. There is a salient in the mid that's quite telling. Um, Three-inch mortar is going to be pinning down his Volshimegas. They'll eventually get dealt with. But yeah, just making a, a, a serious push here at any point on the map is probably a good idea. Just because there's a lack of time left. The rifles are trying to make some ground here. Into the phase of pioneers is pretty unfortunate because, yeah, they're just going to get blown up. So either way, pioneers now going to come under fire from bofers. The Churchill 5 does have shots on as well. Another SFH now on the bottom side is going to try and hit that both as in the mid. But I am just very surprised about how slow this is currently going. Fulcrum Jaegers are just going to hold their fire now, open up onto the rifles, absolutely obliterate them. Both are here to cover this time though. And that may allow for these Fulcrum Jaegers to both be pinned. The Churchill 4, though, definitely needs to start pushing forwards. Maybe he's worried about Fulcrum Panzer Abwehr. Like, Panzer Shreks might be something to be worried about. At this range, it's it's pretty much ideal for, like, if a tank comes around the edge of this tree line, a Panzer Shrek that's sat here could just fire at it straight away and try and kill it. That might be something that Herr Robert's worried about. Churchill 6, however, is getting quite aggressive in the mid. Wavers has been killed by the SFH there. But you can see this town just as defended as the bottom side. And these rifles aren't going to make too much ground, especially with the pioneers blowing up one squad. Probably going to shoot to death the other. Two martyrs on the field. Definitely going to help support with their 4 HE on their main gun. These martyrs are actually relatively good at sort of suppressing infantry from range. Also getting a shot onto the Churchill 5s there is very nice. Yeah, Herr Robert holding the plus one is not going to be enough. Needs to find the plus two. It's currently 3% away from finding it. New Forshimiang is coming in for this top side. Churchill's still not really doing too much. HS129 Gout going to come in for the kill onto the Churchill 6 and does find it. I guess this could be another worry. If the Churchill 4 reveals itself on that top side, then... It does have the potential to be uh, shot at by HS129. But Herr Robert has invested in the Spitfires now. And it looks like he will be able to take out at least one of the ME109 G6R6s. So that's uh, a good job. Well done by him. Does find another salient on this top side. These Volschmegas certainly hold the line. Give them that much. His rifles, unfortunately, seem to be dying in vain. Humber Mark III has arrived. That's a two-star Humber Mark III. We'll be able to do a lot of damage. Here comes another JU-88, though. That's going to be two 25 HG power bombs straight on the top of the Bofors here. And, well, since it was inaccurate due to the fire from the Bofors already, it doesn't do too much damage. Also... Um, aircraft don't do as much damage to AA naturally anyway, as opposed to other units. That's just a balancing thing. 
Ultramarine is now actually pushing back though on this top side. Alstair is flying around. Uh, surely has just realized that there is nothing here. Maybe doesn't actually believe what he's seeing. I don't know. But either way, the Flak 36 has a chance to actually shoot that down. If it gets a direct hit again, you can see that the Alster has already taken quite a lot of damage, but I think it's just flown out of range, so not today. As that's going to be dying there. And I feel like Kerob, even at like plus two, not going to be enough now, so you'd need a plus three. And it's just got to that point where you're never really going to have enough time to bring back this game, especially with Dinesta investing in these Flak 36s. It's actually just going to be very irritating to take care of since... Herr Robert has a limited amount of artillery. He does have like three inch mortars, but they need to be within 1,200 meter range, which is not really going to happen anytime soon. The 4.2 inch mortar might be able to get some nice shots onto the Flak 88s, but that's if they're even revealed as well, which currently they are not. The one coming up the road reinforcing is, but as soon as that deploys itself into an orchard or something further up, it uh, will be hidden again. And, um,. There's not too much recon. There is recon now on the top side for Herr Robert. And any Volshimigas that are revealing themselves are getting chewed up by the Humber Mark III's. But again, the Churchill IV still not being used. I just had to double take on the ammunition there to check it wasn't internal fragmented or something at some point, but it's not. It's definitely good to go. So maybe just forgetting about the unit there. Maybe can't see it behind the dingo. Something like that. Like if you're zoomed out like this and you're, and you're watching the map. Um, you can lose track of units like that sometimes. By the way, the 4.2 inch mortar here is going to be engaging one of the 88s at least. There are plenty of martyrs, and these are causing quite the issue for Dinesta when it comes to wanting to push forward. Spitfire is now coming in with the strafing runs though. Also got uh, another command coming in for the infantry on the top side now. Ocean Meg is coming in for the bottom. But I think, yeah, all the moves that are uh, happening from here on out are more or less just KD based. Like, who can kill more of whose units? And honestly, I think Robert will have the positive KD. Like, he's made a lot of ground and he's done a lot of damage. And there's been times when Dinesta, especially on the top, didn't have any sort of units there, anything significant at least, is going to force back one of these Spitfires. Another Spitfire going to come straight into the HS-129, does manage to force it to fall back, which is pretty good. These both are stopping the attack onto that Spitfire. Now, Herr Robert, Spitfire coming in with a bombing strike onto the Marder. And here we go, the Churchill 4 finally pushing forwards. That Spitfire completely missed. And did get shot down by the 88s. Okay, maybe maybe it'll be more even. <laughs> but the Churchill 4 coming through there. Killing off the, uh, the Marder is very nice. A new Marder has arrived. Still only a plus one for Herobert. And it seems like he's got his groove on on the top side. But uh, just done it a little bit too late. Recon as they unload... Who just get killed instantly in the face of those Volshimirgas. Another Spitfire Bomber coming in to hit the Marder too. That will likely be pinned down by the Humbers. And then the Churchill 4 will just try and finish that off. Yeah, not too much left in this game. Pretty underwhelming towards the end, if I'm honest. Um, Herr Robert just took way too long to realise that he had a huge advantage up here. And uh, we'll have probably already looked back at this game. It did, of course, take place in March. and But I would say all of the players have increased in skill since March. Um, it is now, of course, July. So um, it's many months to improve on your game. And, and I'm sure this would be one of many games where Herobert realized that he needed to be more aggressive earlier and therefore will in the future and has been quite aggressive in, in recent tournaments. So um, I think it's a good game to sort of learn from. Unfortunately, though, that does mean that Herobert is going to be knocked out of the tournament in the quarterfinals. Dinesta 
congratulations to him, going to be moving on to the semi-finals. But some very nice games, uh, well, basically all came down to the wire more or less. The second game was more decisive from Herr Robert, but um, yeah, two 40-minute games in this best of three was uh, something that's very, very nice to see because it shows that the players are matching up quite well. Either way, let's have a quick scan through some of these kills. Look how many Urza that Strupen died in this game. Absolutely insane. Um, Churchill 6 manages to clean up quite a lot of the lovely stuff. Um, but not too many kills actually in the early game for Herr Robert. That's why he did lose quite a lot of ground. But um, Herr Robert in the late game, you can see how much work the Churchill 4 did and the Churchill 6 here. Actually, this is a Churchill 4. This is a Churchill 6. Um, it cleaned up two Marder 2s, two Panzer 35s and Stur 42. That was the one that was just kind of camping behind that tree line for so long. I think could have been a lot more effective. The 203mm off map I don't think was particularly used very well. It wasn't capitalized upon anyway. This 6 pounder killed quite a lovely amount of stuff in the mid. Um, so that's where the majority of the kills came from. But yeah, just really good job. And this 6 pounder killing the Stur 42 and a Panzer 35 as well uh, before it got overrun by infantry was, was nice. Um, just really good sort of value for money trades for Herr Robert. Just didn't take advantage of the ground that he had the potential of making. H29 B3 did manage to get itself three Churchill kills, which it does pay itself off. So that's quite nice. Pack 40 cleaning up the AVRE early on was very important. Um, definitely changed um, the outcome of the early game at least. Uh, the 210 millimeter off map on the bottom side was a nice response. It didn't get many kills, but it definitely prevent prevented or slowed down the push that Herr Robert was trying to make back on the bottom side. And then the Marder 2 spam just held things back long enough and the Black 88 managed to shoot down two aircraft with its um, high veterancy. And there you have it. So, pretty lovely series to watch. Uh, ended on a very slow note, but either way, I really enjoyed the replays and hopefully you guys did as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next quarterfinal. Goodbye.